Shamai Bob. Hello, everybody. Jason Shepherd Van Hin. Jason Shepherd here. And today, from the Learn Watch podcast, nearly forgot that bit. Got to say that bit. From the Learn Watch podcast. And today, we're looking at a list which is called 25 Words and Phrases You'll Always Hear in Cardiff. Now, I'm a Swansea boy, so I'm going to be interested in this list as well to see how many of the phrases that I, that I use in Cardiff are also used where I come from. But here's the thing, we're not going to look at all 25, because what a lot of these lists do, these Welsh lists, they repeat the same words, and I don't want to keep going over the same words over and over. For example, by there, now in a minute is in this uh, list, and I can tell you that I've taught that one in these lessons, I don't know how many times, and I don't want to bore you, so we will try to keep that to a minimum and just use the ones that I haven't taught you before, or only a couple of times. How about that? So let's see what it says. The article says, it's by Amy Pay, and she says, Cardiff is a special dialect of its own. It's not English, and it's not Welsh. Composed of Wenglish words, hybrids of the English and Welsh language. Wenglish is something that's used all over Wales, much more in South Wales, but all over Wales, not just in Cardiff. Welshisms, things you'll only hear inside Wales. And quirky local references, denizens of the Welsh capital, have a very unique turn of phrase. Now the first one they use here is, not going to lie to you, not going to lie to you, which does not mean that you're not going to be lied to. Um, give you an example that they've got here, not going to lie to you, the queue is long. So basically, you're expressing an opinion or stating something and that you're going to tell that person now. But maybe you're sugaring the pill a little by saying, I'm not going to lie to you. Rather than saying, right, I've got this to tell you and I'm going to tell you right now. You soften the blow a little. Uh, a similar one is not being funny. Um, it says here, uh, it said before something that could be perceived as opinionated, Again, just to soften the blow. For example, not being funny, but your dog's a bit crazy. Not being funny, but I don't like your haircut. It doesn't suit your jib. That kind of thing. Um, okay, this one, that's lush that is, followed by I love it. I loves it, sorry, I loves it, because I add the S in there. The example I give you is, your dress is lush. It is. I loves it. So it's a weird one because lush means fantastic, wonderful, fun, uh, amazing, or even I love it. So you're basically saying, I love your dress. I love it. But we're using two different words to express the same thing. So that's lush, that is. I loves it. You could say... Um, you can say, your dress is lush, that dog is lush, your hat is lush, you are lush. You can use lush for lots of different things. And I loves it just literally is a way of saying, I loves it is literally a way of saying, I really, really, really like that. Tidy, I've mentioned this once or twice, but uh, it is one you hear in Cardiff. It's used to describe something good, something that gets a thumbs up. Uh, you've done a tidy job on that. Oh, that's a tidy thing you did. That's a good thing you did. Tidy. I use this one, but I don't drop the T. All right. All right. It's basically the word all right. Uh, and it's an alternative to saying hello. Uh, maybe in Cardiff they drop the T. Where I'm from, we would really emphasize the T. We'd go, all right, all right. But yeah, you can say it in many different ways. And it's just a way of saying hello. So if I said to you, all right, when I just met you, I'm not asking how you are. I'm saying hello. But if I said to you, you are right. You're right. You're right. Then I'm asking how you are. So if I say all right to you, you can either just say, ah, yeah, back. Or you can say, all right, back to me. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, all right. They've got these in one list, and I can understand why. Humming, buzzing, and minging. And we drop the the G from that. We go umming. I might you might drop the H as well. Um, that's humming, buzzing, minging. 
and they all mean disgusting. The first two, humming and buzzing, very much about smell. Oh, that's humming, that is. Oh, that's buzzing, the smell is buzzing. So it's a disgusting smell. Minging can be used for a smell. Oh, that smells minging. See, we have the word smell in there. That smells minging. Or, oh, that looks minging. So you can use that word in many different ways. The example I give you is, ah, oh, this old yoghurt is buzzing. Now, apparently, they use the word bad um, in Cardiff in the non-ironic sense. If they said to you, oi, mate, that bowl haircut is bad. They're literally saying your haircut is terrible. But apparently, it doesn't just mean bad. It means very, very bad. So they use the word bad to mean very bad, whereas most of society seems seems to use it these days to mean good. I don't know, it's confusing. Where to's it? The example here is, where to's the shop you got that from? Where's, where to's it literally means, where is it? Where to's it? Where to's that jumper of mine? I can't find it anywhere. Where to's it? Where is it? We've already done this one. By there, I'll be there now in a minute. But this next one is described as being similar to in a minute. Oh, I'll be there now in a minute. So I'll, I'll use that. So I'll be there now in a minute means I'll be there soon. We've done that one before. But this one we haven't done. In a bit. So if I said to you, I'll be there now in a minute, I'll be there soon. If I say to you, I'll be there in a bit. That's a longer distance. That could mean I'll be there in a half an hour. I could mean a few hours. It certainly doesn't mean days, but it, it could mean half an hour plus up to a few hours. I'll be there in a bit. I'm not coming in a minute. Soon, I'll be there in a bit. Uh, the example they give you is, ah, see you in a bit. See you later, in other words. On Club Ivor Bach, has got a, they've got a tweet here on the article. Doors for tonight's show open in half an hour. See you in a bit. So what they mean is I'll see you in at least half an hour, in this case, but probably in a couple of hours because the show's not starting yet. And it's a nightclub, so it could literally be a few hours before people uh, turn up there. Now, I use this one. What it is, is, and it's used as a way of explaining something. Uh, it says here, despite the lack of clarity in the phrase itself, it's used to explain something. The, the example they give is, what it is, is the man said he called back later. I might say, what it is, is I need to have a chat with you about what you did the other night. What it is, is uh, I gotta go out now, but I'll see you later, yeah? Now, again, they're using the phrase here that uh, I've I've told you about many times, but, and they've also used one I haven't used here before, which is boot, which is definitely a very Cardiff term. Now, I didn't know this, but they're both uh, friendly, affectionate terms for a friend or associate. But, but is used in Cardiff more for guys, apparently. All right, but, sure, in, in, in gent, I don't know, it can be used for anybody, really. But in Cardiff, apparently, it's used more for a gent. And boot is used more for the ladies. So if I said, all right, boot, I'd be talking to a, a, a girl. Um, let's have a look. Ah, Mitcher. Now, this comes in a few form. They've just got Mitcher here. But you can be a Mitcher. You can be Mitchin. And there's also the dreaded Mitchman. What am I talking about? Well, a Mitcher is somebody who uh, pulls a sickie, bunks off. School usually, it could be anything, it could be work, school, whatever, but we'd use it more with school when I was growing up. Uh, oh, he's a Mitcher. But you would also say he is Mitchin. He is bunking off school today. So he's a Mitcher. He bunks off work or school. He's Mitchin. He is, he's in the act of bunking off uh, school. And there's also the dreaded Mitch man which is the man that the school sends to come to your house to find out if you're really ill. Um, another term, not listed here, that we would use in Wales, an old term now, 
but my, my parents used to use this, was the whipper in. Uh, that's another word for somebody that's going to um, see if you're ill enough to be home from school. I suppose literally a whipper in, they whip you into school. You know, they whip you back to school you know, with a big stick back in those days. Now, this used to be more shocking than it is now. Uh, do do. It was used to express shock, surprise, or being taken aback. More often said by older generations, but it was also shocking to some people. Because if you were a church person and you heard somebody say, do do, it literally meant God, God. It was seen as a blasphemy. So a lot of people who wanted to use that phrase would use something similar. It's like when instead of saying shit, you'd say, uh, oh, sugar. It's like that kind of thing. And they would say something that, which sounds way worse than do-do now in today's generation. They would change the D to a J and they'd say juju, meaning well, well, or good goodness, good grief, well, well. But you couldn't say that now. It sounds terrible. And also we're in a society now where these words that are seen as being blasphemous are not such a big deal, at least in the UK. So you'd hear do-do more now. Um, grumpy and bumps, um, shortened words for grumper, basically. You'd also hear bumper instead of bumpy. Oh, and bumpy. There's a lot of different ones that you'd hear. Grumpy, grumper, bumps, bumpy, loads of different ones. Uh, the example I give here is, I went to visit my bumps last night. I went to visit my grandfather last night. Ah, yes, and a bottle of pop. And a bottle of pop. Basically, if you were in a cafe, you'd say, oh yes, um, can I have a tea, two coffees, and one pop, please. And pop is just a generic term for any fizzy drink. Basically, it's like soda in America. And I mean, the clue's in the word, isn't it, for Americans? The, the soda pop is the full name. We call it pop. Most of America calls it soda. I know there is a part of America that calls it pop. I can't remember off the top of my head where that is. But, um, yeah, basically, and a bottle of pop. You'd hear that a lot, especially if um, they had kids with them. Say you were in a cafe, grandpa and, and grandma or mum and dad, and they had the kid with them. they say, oh, I'll have a cup of coffee, a tea, and a bottle of pop. And they'd go, oh, yeah, what pop do you want? And then they'd, oh, what pop do you have? And they oh, we have orange shade, we have lemonade, cola, etc. Now, this is one I have no idea about. This is a real Cardiff one. All the threes. Reference to dragon taxis, the saviours who drive you home after a big night in the diff, which I assume is a shortened way of saying Cardiff. The sentence, I'll call all the threes. They'll be here in ten. Now, I have no idea about that phrase. Obviously, it means I'm going to call a dragon taxi. But I've never heard that. So if somebody wants to leave a comment below explaining what that means exactly, all the threes, uh, where it comes from, that would be good. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's video, please give us a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos, why not subscribe? And if you'd like to know every time that a video comes out, because you think they're just that good, and you have to know straight away when it comes out, because you want to watch it, and you want to be the first, click the little bell. <laughs> that was a, <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. I was silly and dramatic at the same time. If you would like to uh, support what we're doing here, there's two ways. You can go to learnwatchpodcast.co.uk, join the Learn Welsh Podcast Club, or you can go to patreon.com slash learnwelsh, join Patreon, and either way, you'll get loads of extra learning materials. That's a big thank you, and to help you in your quest to learn the Welsh language. Well, it's time for me to go. All right, I've got to go now, Boot. All right, Boot, I'm going out. And uh, maybe I'll get uh, all the threes and I'll drive off back to, to back to pretend. Anyway, time for me to go. Oh, bye.